Uh, thank you very much, Heather. Appreciate that. Uh, so on behalf of the Board of Supervisors and County Administration, it's a pleasure to uh, participate in uh, today's workshop. And uh, I have the pleasure of introducing Catherine Fox, who is Vice President of Public Affairs and Destination Development for Visit Virginia's Blue Ridge, our regional uh, tourism development authority. And, um, you know, I, I say this about Catherine and um, I'm, I'm going to leave a few seconds for suspense. She is one of the nicest people in the Roanoke Valley. And uh, I'm not saying that to be entertaining necessarily, but in being sincere and, and honest with you. Uh, so when it comes to something like hospitality, I really can't think of anyone better uh, than Catherine to talk about the subject. Um, she does a phenomenal job with Visit Virginia's Blue Ridge. Uh, she uh, has been with uh, tourism development in the Roanoke Valley for uh, quite a few years and is very much uh, a mainstay and a staple in our regional collaboration. Uh, so Botetourt County, the Board of Supervisors in 2015 um, asked for legislation that Delegate Terry Austin carried in the General Assembly to create an additional two cent hotel lodging tax to allow Botetourt County to more actively fund Visit Virginia's Blue Ridge. And that has been an investment in our tourism based businesses here in the county. It has um, paid dividends. We have allowed our tourism development efforts to scale to a regional level and to rely upon the expertise of people like Catherine and her team and her uh, teammates. And uh, so again, I can't think of anybody better to talk about hospitality and customer service than Catherine Fox. Um, so it's a pleasure to participate today and I'm looking forward to hearing all the good, good information. And so with that, uh, Catherine, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Ken. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Grant. And behind the scenes, Jennifer at the chamber. I just want to say, um, I think without you and your collaborative efforts, I don't know that we would be here today. Um, so you're brainstorming this opportunity. I wanted to say that this opportunity came about when uh, we realized that in-person hospitality training wasn't a possibility. Um, this is after so many years of doing it in person because that is the way to do hospitality and customer service training is to do it in person. Um, we felt like there was a gap before we could actually do that. And this is our alternative. So I wanna thank um, all of the folks who are collaborating with us today. Um, I really appreciate the support of Botetourt County, um, Ken and his team and uh, working with Heather and Grant and Jennifer. So just thank you for actually maybe setting the bar here for uh, opportunities in other localities that we represent. Visit Virginia's Blue Ridge represents the city of Roanoke, the city of Salem, Botetourt County, Franklin County, and Roanoke County. So there's five localities that we represent. And as Ken said, um, with five, that collaboration allows us to be stronger as one in getting the message across for tourism. So that is um, our efforts is to see that there is an economic impact. So the money that um, is um, uh, invested in us through these localities then is returned many times over um, back to our government. So we, we look for that and we'll explain that a little bit. Today's presentation, although normally is about three and a half hours, um, I appreciate your hour of time today. Um, we are going to dive into a little bit of uh, about tourism, why tourism is important for our region. I think that's probably uh, more than anything, uh, just maybe giving some new, um, new ideas behind, behind that purpose. And then also talk about strategies for customer service, um, and then talk a little bit about resources that we as a region can provide you. And so we're gonna break it up like that. And then we're gonna have time for uh, questions and answers afterwards. So we wanna make sure that you network, um, offer, offer some um, uh, information questions for us as well. So we're gonna, we're gonna run through this slide. I am no expert in customer service, but I will say this, we all know how we like to be treated um, when we go into, and I know there's some banks on, on this um, Zoom as well as um, hotels on the Zoom, attractions. So we all know how we wanna be treated when we go to these various locations. This is just, um, it's really, um, fundamental. It's, it can be basic, but if we can provide you with some new opportunities and new ideas, that's what we want to do today. Um, as Ken mentioned, um, I, I joined Visit VBR. I'd have to say I'm excited to say that I'm 32 years in this week. 
um, which is hard to believe. Um, I am a Hokie and a hospitality grad, so um, it's a pleasure to be here today. Um, we will also have a guest speaker um, come in uh, who is an intern at Virginia Tech, um, Adam Malinchek, um, who worked with Disney to provide his insight um, as well. So excited to have Adam be a part of the conversation today because I remember what that was like 32 years ago. Um, so let's go ahead and get started and again look forward to um, an active conversation um, uh, at the end of the presentation. But um, let's cover this and I will try to um, be quick but also um, mindful of the hour. So we're going to jump in and get us all started. So here we go. So this is our opportunity for hospitality and training workshops. I will say that um, typically in the last three or four years, we've worked with Virginia Western Community College as a partnership to provide training. In the past, I think there might be a couple of folks who have taken that training before, which is, which is fantastic. Um, and it's so interactive and I highly encourage that in the spring. That's our goal is to get back on track with in-person um, opportunity and, and workshops. So I wanna give a little bit of um, background on what Visit Virginia's Blue Ridge does for those who may not be as familiar with us as a tourism organization. We are basically the destination marketing organization. We market we, and develop and manage the region's brand and uh, why people would wanna to come to this region. Um, we are destination marketers um, and economic developers. We're working directly with Ken um, in many ways to, um, to, to seek out businesses opportunities um, that would enhance product development for tourism as well. So we're always looking, looking to, to work in that collaborative spirit. Tourism is big business. And when we say that, we looked at the numbers from 2018 data, the 2019 numbers we hope will be out in the next week or two. But when you start boiling it down and you look at direct travel expenditures for the region, those five localities I mentioned earlier, it's an $892 million impact. For Botetourt County, it's $61 million. I mean, it is a driving force for our region and it's important for employment purposes, for payroll taxes, for local tax collections and state tax collections. This is the impact that we, that we have as a region and uh, it really does say a lot about what tourism brings to our area. How do we measure our performance? A lot of what we do measure is um, hotel room revenue and demand. So that revenue um, is important because um, that tells us where we are in terms of um, our success and our ability to market the region. And if we're successful, then we're bringing in people through demand and we're seeing those revenues, which then the localities will see. Um, and it's, it's just an important opportunity to, to, to grow in that economic impact for the region. As of 2019, 2019, we were at our 10th year of consecutive record growth. Um, 2020 is a different story, but um, we are a resilient industry. What are we doing that as a region, how do we focus on regional efforts and what do we do? So we did a um, vision plan uh, about four, five, six years ago, actually, and we've mindfully been looking at the opportunities from that plan that were most important to our localities. Um, and these are a few of those initiatives from regional wayfinding, um, which is um, going to be uniform signage throughout the, the uh, Virginia's Blue Ridge footprint. Um, that is already underway. I know that um, Botetourt County is looking at some vehicular signs as we speak. Uh, mountain biking initiative, we're the East Coast mountain biking capital. Um, so we've really adhered to that um, tremendously. I know with Carvin's Cove and then a piece of that too. Um, the Greenway and Blueway enhancements, um, everything from the Upper James River Water Trail um, to the Greenways in this region, to the Cheers Trail and like the Blue Ridge Vineyards and Finn Castle um, Winery, um, all on part of this uh, craft beverage trail, bringing people into the region. Um, brand awareness um, is also very important to us. Sports is another piece of that, um, and that is um, when we have uh, something as large as Ironman um, coming to our region. It's a very, uh, it's a regional effort, but one of the largest sporting events that we're going to be hosting, and it's going to be a large part of it is coming to Botetourt County. Um, so we're excited to host Ironman. Um, our, our goal is for 2021 
2022 and 2023, going straight up through um, Troutville, through Buchanan onto 43. This is a, a large part great exposure um, for Botetourt County. Arts and cultural um, collaborative programs, we're always looking for ways to build on our, um, what, what we think is just a round, diverse community, um, and that's our arts and culture. So we work to, through programming efforts, um, whether it's the symphony um, or the opera or, or the Todman Museum. So we're always looking for programs and um, know that Botetourt County has some incredible artists um, as part of their footprint. Um, workforce development with Virginia Western, I mentioned earlier through hospitality training. We do offer a centralized calendar of events, which I know Barbara Kolb had a question about how to drill that down into Botetourt County events, and we'll try to explain how we can work towards that goal. And then attracting and retaining talent. If we're successful in bringing visitors here and we're successful in keeping them here and they're enticed by the product that's here, the opportunity to retain talent is much greater. So those are some of the things just to share with you um, our focus for um, our destination vision plan. We currently have 159 Botetourt County partners. Um, overall, we have 1,500 partners, but it's a significant part of our footprint and um, we're here to help and provide resources for our partners. Why is tourism significant? I mentioned it was an $892 million direct travel expenditures, but travelers leave money from shopping to dining to hotels to nightlife to art galleries to festivals, um, outfitters, uh, wineries. Um, so all of that money translates into jobs, payroll, sales tax, meals tax, and lodging tax, which then benefits our businesses, our schools, and our residents. But tourism is economic development, but in, and for economic development, for Ken to have a prospect come into town, they have to start with a visit. Um, and what they see while they're here is important um, and what they what they gather as if they were going to bring people for their business and they want to they want to relocate a business here. What would it be like to live here to work here. And then in that case, if, if there's growth from that work opportunity, then there's more businesses. It's quite the cycle, um, but it all starts with a visit. So why, why talk today about customer service? Because customer service is the key to a successful business and destination. It's all about the customer. If the customer's happy, it's all about word of mouth. It's social media. It's all of us being able to um, you know, give someone that feedback about how their experience was. We all know what works and what doesn't work, um, what hotel um, was their favorite, um, what attraction was their favorite and why. Um, but we've all had a series of, of challenges. So I'm going to um, give you some models of which to consider when you start looking at customer service. Now I know that our hotels have various um, guidelines that whether they're a specific brand, they have their own customer service um, guidelines. Um, same with banks, same with most businesses. But um, again, overall, just want to share a little bit of what we've experienced over the years that seems to be a good message. So what you do is important. So if you're if you are at a point where you have a touch point with a visitor, it's how you acknowledge them rather than consider them an interruption. Um, we all know we want to be considered with that eye contact and, and be thought of um, when we walk in the door. Learn to answer visitor questions, no matter what the subject, and we'll give you those resources to help help do that. But more than anything, it's about teamwork. It's together. Everyone achieves more. And that is um, that is so important when it comes to if the front of the office is working like the back of the office, um, then it all works um, a little bit better together. So that's that's where we think the teamwork is more important. I actually learned this from um, Joe Theismann. For those of you who know football, um, those of you who know the quarterback, um, he gave a presentation about um, what it takes to be a teamwork. And of course, that's imperative when you're a quarterback and you're on a team, you're all um, having to um, work together. So another model that we've used is called the guest. It's treat your customers at work as you would treat a guest in your own home getting ready for them, um, cleaning, um, looking like you're welcoming, um, having the right 
um, you know, uh, amenities um, ready for them when they come. So um, there's nothing different from that and, and, and the fact that um, you treat those um, who are coming to your place of work just like you would as if they were coming to your home. And this deals mainly with the hospitality part of it. Um, maybe not so much with, um, with a grocery store or, or, you know, a different type of business, but, but, but again, some of these focus more on hospitality um, in particular. So I want to ask Adam if he would like to share his experience um, with Disney under the Disney's four keys of guest satisfaction. He had the opportunity um, to work. He told me that he worked the Jungle Cruise. For those of you who've been to Disney and enjoyed the Jungle Cruise, I'm sure he's shot a few animals um, with that fake gun um, and done and, and done all the all the animations that um, they do um, on those cruises. So Adam, if you have a, a moment and you can unmute. Can you share what Disney drilled into you about the four keys of guest satisfaction? Well, thank you uh, very much, Catherine. Can everybody hear me? All right, wonderful. Uh, so just a just a, a very quick intro. Uh, like Catherine said, I am interning with Visit Virginia's Blue Ridge uh, this semester. Uh, I am a student here at Virginia Tech. I'll be graduating in December. And luckily, I have grown up my entire life here in uh, Virginia's Blue Ridge, and so I'm very happy to be representing them uh, these next couple of months. So yeah, so I worked at Walt Disney World for about a year and a half. And like Catherine said, yes, the, the four keys are drilled into you day in and day out, which honestly is a good thing because they are a very, very good uh, benchmark for how to treat your guests. And you can see up there, safety, courtesy, show, and efficiency in that order. And the order is very important. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, so you see kind of a, some more uh, details on the four keys. Uh, these are taken directly from Disney. This is, you will see, if you ever go to Disney, you will see them um, backstage, on backstage areas everywhere. Uh, so I wanna talk about, just kind of go through them point by point, safety. With this pandemic, safety is even more important than ever. Um, you know, if, if you are joining the Virginia, uh, Visit Virginia's Blue Ridge Stay Safe Pledge, which we hope that you do, um, you know, that is one of the paramounts. You have, safety comes before everything. Uh, and obviously the definition of safety has changed a lot. Courtesy, you know, I project a positive image and energy. This is something that, that Catherine was talking about earlier. You know, it's as simple as just smiling when people come in. Hi folks, welcome, come on in, what can we do for you? You know, exactly like how you would treat someone coming into your house. Uh, the first job that I worked at Disney, I was a vacation planner. So uh, I was the guy at the front of the park that sold you your tickets or uh, processed your will call. And the attitude that I adopted was, I'm going to treat every guest that comes to my window like they're an old friend and I'm showing them around town. And when we're here representing a beautiful hometown, that should be everyone's goal. Hey, thanks for coming in. Let me show you around. Hey, here's a really great restaurant. Oh, you got to go check out this. You got to go check out that. It's not, it, it's, it's, it's just very, very simple. Show. I, show is a really important one. Every single business in existence tells a story, whether you realize it or not. Now, when you go to someplace like Disney, story is pretty obvious. You are going to meet the princesses. You are going uh, to, to, you know, live a Star Wars adventure. But every business tells a story. When you walk into the Hotel Rono, just across the street from where we are now, you're getting this story of a, a historic, beautiful hotel in the history of Roanoke. You know, if you go into a general store, you're going, you're, you get this story of, you know, the, the history of the town, what you're selling, Every single business tells a story. You have to determine what kind of story you want to tell, and you have to make sure that every single one of your employees is on the same page and that they're all telling the same story. And this, they, stay, they say, I stay in character and perform my role in the show. What is the role of your employees? I don't know. That is something that you have to decide and, and think about what makes sense. What is their role? Ensure my area is show ready at, at all times. I did theater in high school. Um, I, I was the, the nerdy theater kid. And before every show, we had to make sure every, every prop was in the right place. Every costume was in the right place in order to make the show go smoothly. What does that look like in your business? That's a good, good thing to, to think about. 
And then finally, efficiency. Efficiency is very important, but there's a reason it's last. And that is because as, it, as important as efficiency is, we're not dealing with products. You know, if you're Amazon, efficiency is everything. You're getting your products out, you're going, you're going, you're going. We are dealing with living, breathing human beings who don't want to feel like they're on an assembly line. Uh, so you know, I perform my role efficiently so the guests get the most out of their visit and I use my time and resources wisely. This is very important. Again, you know, you got to keep people moving, but again, make sure they're people. Every person is different. Every person that comes through your door has a different story, has different needs. So again, be mindful of efficiency, but it is not the most important. Um, and so I think that is kind of a nice way of, of organizing uh, Disney's theory of, of guest interaction and uh, certainly something that, that I believe in personally as well. Catherine, back to you. Great, thanks Adam, I appreciate that. I'm waiting to see what kind of knickknacks he's gonna put on his desk from Disney. I'm just um, waiting to see what that's gonna look I, like. But, uh, I should also probably mention, I did not use the gun. I, I, I was on the cruise, I, I, just, I decided not to do that. So I didn't shoot any fake animals. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Good for you. Well, um, appreciate Adam being a part of our team and bringing that expertise and already having that um, background is really huge. So we appreciate appreciate that piece of it. I mean, if there's anybody who has perfected, at least tried to per perfect um, customer service, it has really been, or guest experience, it really has been Disney. So I'm excited that Adam's had that opportunity and, and brings it to us today and gives him an opportunity um, to, to get into um, the process and presenting. So let's, let's move on. Um, so another opportunity, and again, building on what Adam just said and what we've already said, it's just um, a, a guest is like, as treating customers um, as guests is as simple as welcoming them that Adam mentioned. Um, using their name if it's appropriate, um, taking care of their needs, thanking them, and you know what, inviting them back is pretty big. It's, you know, uh, sometimes the, the, the um, repeat customer can be the, the, the customer that brings you the most um, in, in dividends. So I think that's, that's very, very key, but I think that's another piece of it. We also learned um, a time or two ago a very old theory, and, and um, this came up as a, as a great, and some of you may already have taken the pickle or have heard about Give Them the Pickle. It was a wonderful gentleman who started an ice cream um, shop that really uh, found that one of his customers came to them and said, you know, I'm really sorry that uh, you're now charging for extra pickles. Um, and he says, I'll never come back to your store again. And so the, the owner just basically said, give them the pickles. Um, so that is how um, that all came about. So he started going across the country with this uh, theory and that um, one of the first and uh, key principles of give them the pickle um, is service. Um, and that's making sure that you're not gonna look at the person across the counter who had been getting their pickles free and now you're charging them um, and that decides whether they're coming back or not. So I think that was um, a, a key principle of uh, just give them the, you know, find the, the situation and understand the service um, and what is expected. Um, and I think it's exceeding expectations is, is a big part of that. Um, attitude is a big part. Um, you know, it, it, I, I can't imagine what it's like sometimes to be on the front lines during COVID. Um, it's very, very difficult because in many cases, especially in the hospitality industry, you're wearing four and five hats. Um, there could be a, a point where you are um, downsized um, in a situation where there's multiple people who used to work around you and now you're the one person who is working. Um, so it's important to, to, to understand um, and hopefully everybody understands um, it's important to have um, the best attitude you possibly can under the circumstances. Um, consistency. Um, one of the reasons that people come back um, to, uh, to your product your business um, is because of consistency um, and that is very key to any um, longevity and I think uh, that's that's really key especially if you stay in a specific hotel and you expect a certain amenity and it's not there it's all about consistency um, and knowing um, how to provide that and then as mentioned earlier it's really teamwork if 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 the back of the house is working with the front of the house and you have the ability to make decisions or um, you, you are um, able to um, really come across as uh, working col collaboratively, it does make a big, big difference. So um, teamwork is a very, very big part of that. 
So the question is, is that not all um, visitors, not all guests are gonna be happy. Um, and, and, and what do you do when they are unhappy? Um, I think that one of the, the biggest parts to take away from this is about listening. It's listening. Um, it is about taking the lead, but listening is important. I had a uh, front desk um, uh, folks uh, who were telling me that they had an individual who came down who was like, so, so mad about a specific situation. Um, and uh, he ranted and ranted and all they did was just, they listened, they listened, they listened. When he was done, um, they asked him, what can we do to make it right? And he was so con he was so, so focused on ranting um, about the problem, he didn't know what it was going to take to make it right. But hearing the fact that they were willing to make it right changed his whole course. Um, so I think it's, um, it's so important, um, as we all know, about the listening part of it, um, which can be very visual, can be very verbal, and it can be very vocal. Um, uh, so just listening to someone who is an unhappy guest. Um, empathize um, and, and just stay calm. Um, just, just say, you know, you understand um, and, and so on. I think we've all been through these situations before. Um, certainly, even if it wasn't something that you did, apologizing for it does seem to help um, mitigate the situation. So I think that's important. Um, and then, of course, doing something about it. And hopefully you have the, you're empowered to have that ability to do something about it. So I wanted to um, you know, share that because if you can empower your front desk um, or the, the, fo the folks on your front lines, it, it does help um, uh, to make things um, a little bit better. So avoiding these statements such as absolutes, um, you know, I know the parade is at two o'clock um, when it's been changed to three o'clock. Um, I know that was something that at Disney, when is the, you know, the question is when is the three o'clock parade? Um, so those are some things, just avoiding some absolutes, describing internal situations. So staying away from whatever is happening internally as possibly um, a situation or an excuse. Um, sharing personal information, it's always best to be professional when on the job and um, avoiding any personal information. Um, sort of offering a, a weak commitment or a commitment of some sort and then not being able to um, really fulfill that commitment or offering it and it doesn't really make a difference. Um, and then, of course, last but not least, blaming others. Um, uh, so that is um, one, of the, one of the things you definitely want to stay away from. So um, Heather asked me if we could maybe go to the facts of general rules of telephone etiquette. And, you know, a lot of us are working at home. Um, you know, many of us are working at home. And, and sometimes you're not able to get somebody because you don't even know if they're at the office, not at the office, what's the best way to reach them. So we bring this back up, um, just like we are QR codes, you know, it's something that you, you use, they, they're successful, um, but you, you need them and um, you need to, to, to be reminded. So when you're on the phone, it's always about choosing your words carefully and um, being polite, being prepared. Um, having all those relevant details when you do call somebody and you're trying to, to go over specifics. Um, concise um, in, your, in your conversation, certainly considerate um, because, you know, people, um, I, I think everyone's time is somewhat um, even more valuable now um, than it's ever been. And then helpful um, in giving uh, someone that opportunity to, to find what you need uh, for that person and or get back with them with that information. Um, so I think those are some, some basic opportunities of phone etiquette. And I'm, I say that just because, again, um, texting is big. Um, we are, you know, into various ways of communicating with each other, but um, I, I feel like the, the um, mobile phone is really becoming more and more where we're calling. I mean, even Ken called me today and said, you know, do you have the Zoom link? Um, uh, <laughs> so, so those are some things that, you know, people don't know where to find folks now because you, they don't know if they're working at home or what their situation is. Um, so I think that these are some, some good reminders. So I wanna just kind of share a couple of things about 10 ideas to great guest relations. And that is, you know, we're always surprised when somebody goes the extra mile. It's, it's, it, it doesn't always happen, um, but let's say you're at a front desk and you happen to have Lentini's menu. Um, and you say, you know, you know, there's an opportunity, they go, they're going out, they don't know where they wanna go, but you have, have, have um, Bellachinos and, and Lentinis and you have all of these wonderful menus. They're like, oh, wow, we can see whether we like to go there or not. Or um, I found that uh, turn by turn directions to get to the Appalachian Trail or to um, the Blue Ridge Parkway, because not everybody is GPS friendly. 
um, you know, we're, we're right now working on the premise that the Blue Ridge Parkway is closed from milepost 136 at Bent Mountain all the way to the Benton area. Um, so we are trying to get visitors who've never been to this area before how to get around that particular detour um, to the point we've um, actually developed a landing page um, with a detour of information of things you can do along the way to make it more attractive to people. So it's going that extra mile and realizing what that need is and developing that, that, that need. Um, as Adam pointed out, smile. It, 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 it's, you know, you've got pretty teeth, so um, show people. Um, so it's, it's a great opportunity to, to smile. Um, get involved, know what's going on. Um, you know, we appreciate the opportunity to provide you resources. So we're gonna give you some ideas of what's happening, what's going on, maybe more ways than you, you, you've ever known. Um, offering options. So let's say somebody comes to you at the front desk and they're asking you, and again, this is tourism related, and they say, what is there to do in this area? And someone says, you know, let me give you some examples. And I just mentioned the, the Blue Ridge Parkway. Um, what about going to Roaring Run? You know, we're finding people want to hike. They want to go to, um, you know, they, they want to go to cabins. They want, you know, they want these outdoor experiences, patio adventures. Um, you know, they're just all wanting to be outside. You know, you could go to Blue Ridge Vineyards and you can sit outside and, and totally social distance um, and enjoy. Um, Barbara, that was, that was the plug if Barbara's on the call or on the Zoom. Uh, we, we, she, she and I, ca I caught her at Earth Fair recently and, and um, she was excited to be on this uh, Zoom call today. So um, as the owner of Blue Ridge Vineyards, she's, she's got um, great space um, to, um, to really social distance and, and bring visitors. Um, be a team player. We talked about that. Together, everyone achieves more. Um, use the website, which is so very mobile friendly. And we'll talk about that. Um, listen to the message. We talked about listening. Um, you know, where we live is awesome. I think we live in an incredibly beautiful, well situated on the East Coast, um, very easy to get to right on an interstate right on a, um, a beautiful byway, um, the Appalachian Trail. We have an incredible outdoor assets and you know we we are very I think we're blessed to have um, the opportunity to be uh, knocking on wood now limited in our COVID situation. Um, you know, an attractive area to visit, especially for friends and family. And that's what we're really seeing is, I know my family has visited two or three times because they know it's safe and they are familiar with what I would want or what I'm doing. Um, and I think it's important that um, we understand that friends and family are coming. I had a friend who um, is having someone visit her this weekend. She was excited to see our blog about outdoor patios. Um, so it's gonna bring people here um, our most recent blog is about the Sunflower Festival that's coming up. Um, actually, that has probably been the most visited last year blog that we've ever had was the Sunflower Festival. Um, so very excited about, um, about the festival that's coming up and, and hope um, that we can have, have it be successful as it always is. Um, provide quality. Um, that's, that's, you know, I think that's um, very easy um, if you can make sure that um, you're providing that consistency and that quality. And then always remember you're representing Botetot and Virginia's Blue Ridge to everyone that you're meeting um, because, you know, you're showing your pride because we have an incredibly beautiful um, area that we represent. So I want to talk a little bit about non-traditional word of mouth um, because this has really changed over the years. Um, Previously, about 15 years ago, I was teaching hospitality training, and we would have never talked about social media and reviews, but that is so, so prevalent now, more so than people talking to each other. It's all about um, what they said on Facebook and where they went, where they stayed, how, how it was, yeah, um, you know, people asking, where would you go if you were going somewhere this weekend? Um, what are some of these things that are out there that you're getting your information and they're seeing information and reviews are becoming um, the norm now as to um, what's important and, and, and um, rating ourselves. So, so these are some social media links that I wanted to share with you and um, we've got some great opportunities and we're going to share <clears throat> these links with you in a resource page that um, we're so excited to, to be able to present. It was, it's hot off the presses. Um, Adam has worked on it to pull it together and um, Heather's given us some great in input and um, these are some things that we wanted to make sure we shared were, were links to Facebook 
um, and the economic development and our hashtags, which we think are um, extremely important when you as a business might be um, posting to think about adding these hashtags, um, whether it's Twitter or Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, or YouTube. Um, we wanna make sure that you're able to go to these um, um, locations and share them um, if you have the opportunity, we would love for you to share them and certainly utilize these hashtags. Um, so wanted to make sure we had those resources for you. Um, in addition, we have an e-newsletter. Um, again, when we talk about the 10 things that um, for, for great customer relations, know what's going on and our e-newsletter helps to do that. Um, we're working out a campaign with Virginia Tourism Co Corporation called Wonder Love. It's across the whole state. Um, these grants that came out. So we're talking about what it what it would be like to to visit and travel um, in the uh, in the Commonwealth and all across uh, Virginia and how to plan that road trip. Um, website links. Um, again, this is going to be part of the resource page. We have a landing page specific to Botatot, very specific. It's a regional planning landing page. It's visitvbr.com backslash Botatot. Um, and it has everything and all the partners in one concise layout and landing page. Um, so it is an awesome thing um, for, for folks to be able to um, get into um, a, a region, but then be able to see that region um, kind of come onto its own. So we're excited to, to have um, built a landing page specific to Botatot. Um, we have a calendar of events page, which before COVID was the most visited place on our page. Um, much of what's there now is very limited and virtual, but we're starting to see some, some, some visibility, some things happening there. Hotels and lodging are important. I tell you, cabins um, and campgrounds are a big, big request of late. Um, restaurants, we actually have a page all mapped out um, where you can uh, go to these various um, locations. When COVID hit, um, we had these planning pages um, talking about which restaurants were open and when. We try to keep all that information up to date. So if you were going to a specific area, you knew um, what was close by. Um, mountain biking and cycling, bikevbr.com, all the information about cycling roads um, and mountain biking. Um, again, outdoor adventures, things to do via trail setter. And I, I think our blog is extremely informative and stays um, very relevant um, for each of our regions um, as well as um, for the seasons. So I wanted to share with you as of yesterday, just um, why um, it's so important to have uh, a regional um, website um, for people to be funneled into from all of our um, opportunities to either market or advertise or um, any kind of article that comes out about us. We're dr drilling them all and funneling them into visitbbr.com. Um, we had 141,000 unique visitors um, which again isn't where we were last year, but it is up over July. So this is, it's a small uptick, which is good. Um, we're starting to see smaller incremental up, upticks, which is which is um, positive um, for us and hopefully um, good for um, our businesses. Total visits and page views you can see are there, but our top ten pages um, from July um, or I'm sorry from August. It's relaxing outdoor adventures in VBR. The blog post got 13,000 page views. So you can see what people are looking for and what they are um, doing. And it's very much driven to, to outdoors. Um, so we always say if you put a picture up about with babies and, and um, pets, um, it's going to get a lot of, of uh, attention. So we're, we're always looking for some great photography. So you can always remember this is um, just a kind of a, um, a look at what our mobile website looks like, our, our mobile site looks like. You can see um, it's just, it, it really does do, again, the BBR takeout maps. That's what I was meaning to tell you is that we were monitoring all of the um, restaurants that were offering takeout so that during COVID people know where they can get um, various um, takeout. And outdoor patio options has been really big. Cabins has been good. Um, and uh, outdoor relaxing adventures. I know Twin River Outfitters has had a great, so I, I believe they've had a great year. Um, so these are some options that you can find us, again, at visitbbr.com, our 800 number. The Visitor Center, which is um, in downtown Roanoke. Um, it is located um, uh, uh, between the Todman Museum of Art and the Hotel Roanoke. Um, our Visitor Center is open seven days a week. 
from 9.30 to 4.30, and we have someone here on staff to help um, provide you. We always say that's a great place to bring your friends and family and tell them where to go. Um, so you guys um, are able to use us as a resource. Again, cross-promoting regional events is big. Um, some of the events that are coming up, I mentioned the Sunflower Festival, the Buchanan Tri, um, the, the Truck and Tractor Pool on September 12th, and the Grand Fondo. Um, these are just a few examples. And I think um, if you go to the events page on our website and you, and you type in the keyword Bata Tot, um, it will come up with the Bata Tot events. Um, so I wanted to make sure I shared that, especially I know Barbara was asking that question and I can certainly work with her um, to showcase that and share that information as well. But just wanna make sure that you have that as a resource too. We just launched about three weeks ago, our BBR Savings of Pass. Um, anybody who is a member who has visitors coming into your, um, into your business, um, you can be added to this. We've got about 40 um, or so businesses on here. Um, it allows people to get a, a, a discount, an incentive to get them in their door, um, in their business. Um, so if you have any interest in that, um, on that resource page, you're welcome to reach out to me and I can explain more about what that is, but it is a, an online mobile app um, that allows people to get to it um, and it, it gives them the opportunity to, to get these discounts. Again, during COVID, we feel like during the recovery process, people are going to be looking for discounts. Um, so this is an excellent platform um, to use. So Adam mentioned, and um, I think it's important to just mention this, this is a huge part of what we're doing right now. If we're going to be working towards the goal of bringing visitors here in the fall and in the winter during the holidays, we need to make sure we're staying safe and we have this pledge. So we rolled it out in June, but in the um, most recent um, weeks, we've been doing posters and masks and taking them to our businesses and partners who've signed on to um, our Stay Safe pledge. This is what businesses are doing to stay safe, and this is what we're asking the guests to do to stay safe. So when we bring visitors here and they see these uniform messaging, this is so important for them to feel welcome um, and for them to feel a little bit safer, but it's also important our residents realize we're doing this in a way that's mindful and um, we're protecting our residents, we're protecting our businesses, and we're protecting staff at the businesses um, for visitors, but we do need visitors and guests to come to our area to sustain our businesses um, and our hotels. So this is where we are. We're trying to find that um, happy medium so that everybody is, um, is, is okay with, um, with with bringing more people back to the region. So this is our way of doing that. I wanna thank Carrie Gleason, who is going to spend half a day with me tomorrow afternoon uh, to go from business to business um, and uh, look to uh, take the Stay Safe Pledge posters and masks to businesses in Buchanan. So I wanna thank him um, for being willing to do that with me tomorrow. So the other thing we do is very much advocacy. Um, I just plug this and we'll put this in the follow-up with you, just so you know, we are looking to put lights out on Interstate 81 um, we are asking VDOT to consider this. We're asking the region to consider this. We are looking at exits all the way from 137 to 150. Um, we feel that safety is the most important piece of this. We know that um, this is an area and intersection and, and interchanges that can sometimes be um, a little bit of, of a safety issue. Um, but at the same time, we think that this would reduce those crashes, um, but also um, look at it as if we're a larger community with more amenities and perhaps increase the opportunity for tourism in the region as well. So get more people off of the interstate at exit 150 um, for the lighting and getting more people off of the interstate um, in this whole region. So that is what we're trying to do. You'll get um, a little bit of the survey monkey. Um, it's just asking you to fill out your name and just say, yes, I support this. So becoming a partner, it's free. If you're a tourism related business and, you're, um, and you wanna reach out, please do. It's a very easy um, sign up process, but your benefits are being on our website, driving all that traffic to um, our listings and our partners. Um, we have in incentive programs like the BBR Savings Pass. We bring travel writers and travel journalists to the area um, and they're here to write about unique story ideas. And um, we're trying, that's how we can get more people to our region. Um, we're an extension of social media for you. I mean, we're looking at hashtagging for you, for us, and getting that message out through our social media channels. 
um, partner referrals. I mean, we're always looking to say, hey, you maybe want to go to this restaurant or this attraction or, you know, getting people out in, in our region. So partner referrals is another. Networking opportunities and, and opportunities as such as today. Um, this is another, another way to do that. And tourism advocacy. Um, we're always working with our state legislators to make sure that we're being um, on top of any legislative issues that would impact the tourism um, businesses um, in our region. Uh, so that is another piece of that. This is a little bit of an example of some of our um, travel publicity um, that our communications team has been able to bring this, bring journalists here and experience um, some of the um, the region. So this is uh, these are some of the things that we've been able to be in um, Boomer Magazine in Richmond, um, Men's Journal to. Um, you know, kayaking, um, I believe that's formed, and, and also in the Forged Film Company. So these are just um, a few examples of what we've been able to accomplish through our um, PR efforts um, through Virginia's Blue Ridge. So we did some, um, some early on um, in the campaign when COVID was hit, we did a lot of um, great imagery. And one of the things that I love is this photograph. Um, it's Botetech County in Virginia's Blue Ridge is worth the wait. Um, so we know that people, when they're ready, are going to be coming to Virginia's Blue Ridge. They're going to be coming to Botetourt County, and they are going to find these awesome, serene opportunities to um, head down the river, um, hike, um, or drive along the Blue Ridge Parkway. So there's some amazing outdoor and hiking opportunities for all of us. Um, so you can find all of that at visitvbr.com backslash Botetourt. So I want to thank everyone for allowing um, Visit Virginia's Blue Ridge, Adam, um, to help in presenting today and. Um, I really want to say thank you to um, the folks um, who really inspired um, Visit Virginia's Blue Ridge to provide this presentation today. Um, really appreciate you and hope that uh, the folks on the Zoom were able to um, get something out of it. I'm going to stop sharing my screen um, and show the gallery and open it up um, to 